Milk. Crate. Marauder. Here, Ed McMahon do. Hi, this is Ed McMahon. We need you for Star Search. We need your daughters. If you're a girl between the ages of... And 19 with bad grades and an unstable family, come to my house. Star Search is looking for cellulite free young women. Spokesmodels, you cannot be turned down. Get to meet a wine soaked second banana. There are no judges, just me. Jack A, get out of here. You cannot be turned down. Are you really? Where's my lobster bib? Yes, life will be champagne and video smarts and magazines to read while I nap. I'll dress you up like Tommy Newsome. Star Search needs you. Yum, yum, yum. Come meet Johnny. Party with me in my bathrobe, you spokesmodels. Trapes with me through hotel lobbies at 3 a.m. Wearing nothing but vomit-stained terry cloth robes. <laughs> Bring your lesbian roommates. Room service. We need more KY and K-O-Pectate. Be the first on your block to lick liquid off of Ed. It'll be a new life. Try being a spokesmodel. You can't be turned down. Now, I can't call you. You have to call me. Parade around in your bathing suit while... While I soil my rope and rate you on a scale of one to ten. I want to rate you. I want to rate you. I want to rate you now. Call today. I could go any minute. I'm so horny I could make Johnny look like a homo. I think I've gone mad. I'm so wet I might propose to you on national TV on a float. Undress for me. We'll adopt a child. hi -oh. I'll even do that for you. I'll bet this sounds too good to be true. Send your photos to Ed McMad, care of Peter Calabrese at the Hacienda Hotel, Las Vegas, Nevada, OU812. If you've got a dot in the middle of your forehead or a fuzzy back, don't apply. If you've got an exotic look, we'll create a special category. Shouldn't you call now? <laughs> Did that come over the mic? No? Good. I don't want everybody to know what a mess I am. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We've been writing some good stuff. We're vicious in the 90s. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, once we now that we're number one, I want to make sure we stay there. Oh, man. <laughs> Play that again. You like that, huh? <laughs> See, that's what I like, Robin. She's what, I can write one bit with the boys, and then we just play all the show. It's pretty good, huh? Oh, come on. i got to hear that again. There were nuances I've missed. Who do you think is more pissed off at us today, Cher or Ed? I, it would be a close one because, yeah. I, you know, I was like, this is just as offensive as the Cher. Well, how about, about, well, how about, uh, how about I play the uh, Cher song now? Uh, you know, and that'll keep you waiting, that'll keep you hungering for more Ed. There's st stuff I want to hear again. Yeah. Now. <laughs> I want to rate you oh, now. No. I want to rate you now. <laughs> Be the first on your block to lick liquid off of it. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> it's funny how the biggest laugh, though, is Peter Calabrese, and no one knows who he is. <laughs> We're the only ones who know who he is. And we just and we just wrote that for ourselves for music. Personal joke. Yeah. <laughs> it's just <a> stupid. <laughs> He's the guy who uh, produced our Fox show. Every week, you know, now I see his uh, name on one of those HBO shows, and I laugh at home. Yeah. You know what Gary told me yesterday, and I don't know if this is true or not, but he says he's major league uh, tight with uh, Terry Gar. I mean, he lives with her and everything. He's, no. That's his girlfriend. It's definitely true. It's definitely true? He produced the uh, one-night stands for HBO, and Bob Nelson did one. Nelson and said she was there. Yeah, evidently they're like, you know, he's Mr. Terry Gar now. Oh, no. Yeah. Ick. Send your star search entries to Mr. Terry Gar. <laughs> yeah, he's got, like, himself a major celebrity going there. Oh. It's got to be pretty neat. But she's got some dough. Yeah. And, uh, and some talent. And some talent. <laughs> What's she doing with him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, but she digs him. She's wacky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Can I play Cher is, uh, I mean, Chaz is gay, babe? Or uh, do I need to take a break here, Fred? Uh, quick break and then Chaz is gay, babe. Uh, who this? Cash app, dollar sign, milk, crate, marauder. Uh-huh. Venmo, at milk. Crate Marauder. 
<laughs> you stupid bastard. Anyway, what else is in the news, Robin? There was an executive on a plane the other day who uh, <laughs> kind of distinguished himself. I don't think they'll ever forget him. Gerard Finnerman is a 58-year-old man from Greenwich, Connecticut, who is uh, out on bail of $100,000 after uh, being arrested after a United Airlines flight from Buenos Aires. <laughs> he said this guy started a drinking binge before he even got on the plane. Good thing he was in the uh, Midtown Tunnel. <laughs> and continued to drink, you know, after the plane took off and was in the air. And when the flight attendant told him that he'd reached his drinking limit. How many drinks did he have? I don't know. Yeah. They just said that he was just drinking before he got on the plane, and then he would continue to drink after he got on the plane, and he, I guess he was a little bit belligerent and out of control. Drinks! So they told him that he had reached his drinking limit. Oh, yeah, but one more, please. <laughs> and the flight was about 12 hours long, so I'm sure he had a lot of drinks. It's not like I'm flying the plane. Give me more. I'll knock you on your ass if you don't give me another. They said there was there was four hours remaining in the flight. Wow. When they told him that he had reached his limit and they weren't going to serve him anymore. I've never seen them deny anybody drinks. I thought they couldn't. Yeah. If there was a law, you have to keep serving people drinks. But Finnerman allegedly began taking drinks from the service car himself. <laughs> <laughs> they told him he couldn't have anymore. <laughs> <laughs> when the crew stopped him, if you do he stuff, became, what? If you do stuff like that, they have you arrested on the ground. Oh yeah, it's a serious offense. I heard he's out on a hundred thousand dollars bail. Wow. We're talking serious deal here. I mean, you could do that on the ground. Nobody cares. <laughs> you know, you, you, you maybe the cops will just take you out until you go home. But listen to this: you would have died if you had been on this flight. You I, I never see anything good. Never have made it through. When the crew stopped him, he began threatening them. <laughs> He came very nasty. He told one of the male flight attendants that he was going to bust his ass. Oh, bust your ass. Because he wasn't getting ah, you all suck. When a female attendant also refused his demand for more drinks, he pushed her into a seat. Ah, you all suck. But he really stunned everybody when he climbed on top of the service card in first class. <gasps> Dropped his <gasps> pants and underwear and defecated. Oh! <laughs> then he used Stop the lemon napkins as toilet <laughs> and wiped his hands on various countertops <laughs> and service implements used by the crew. What was the guy's name? Then he tracked feces throughout the aircraft. Uh, hey, I tracked feces. Send the footing and shut up. Feces. Feces. It tracks so well. Wow. Hey, I feel like Little Red Riding Hood with the crumbs. First class, my ass. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's lawyer vigorously denies a lot of charges. This. Does he deny everything? Yeah, he says that. Who would the the but isn't there like a ton? Yeah, who, aren't there a ton of witnesses that saw the guy rubbing I feces? I would imagine that the whole first class. Saw right. It. The food gave me the squirts. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted more Bloody Mary mix, Mr. and Mrs. T's Bloody Mary mix. <laughs> the guy is a former senior vice president at uh, Drexel Burnham Lambert and City Corp. So he had hmm. some very high-powered positions, and some of the people who know him say they find it very bizarre because he has always been kind of a In control. quiet, straight-laced guy. He might have had a bad childhood. <laughs> His mother might have forced him to uh, look at religious sayings in the basement. <laughs> Cut up. Yeah. We have to talk to someone on that plane. If anyone Can you imagine being on that plane? Where did it originate from? Buenos Aires. Yeah, any of our listeners in Buenos Aires, if you can give us a call. <laughs> Where, where was it landing? In uh, New York. Oh, wow. So anybody was on somebody, that plane, somebody. give us a call. <laughs> oh, what airline? United. Uh, United. <laughs> PCs! Yeah, he went to Kennedy on Friday, so anybody who was on that plane. They Kennedy said on the news Sky he would get 20 years. Yeah, that's right. That's the... Uh, what did they say? He could get 20 years if, you know, they threw the book at him and he was convicted of this. Just for duty. Crunch. Sky Just duty. for duty. <laughs> <laughs> duty to get 15 years. OJ kills two people and he's free. Uh, 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 duty. 
<laughs> but just imagine you need a drink so bad, you know, like you can't. You start grabbing them off the tray yourself. In all seriousness, there's nothing to do on those planes, Rob. <laughs> Give me some more vodka, you air whores. Uh -huh. Air whores. Uh -huh. Hey, this isn't a duty-free flight. <laughs> no. Sir, we're going to have to ask you to sit down. Yeah, well, this yeah, is hey, a... you fag. Ah. You fag it. Fag job. Oh, your hey, you're a steward. Flag. Flying fag. Clear. Homo. Stop the weed. I can't take it. The in-flight movie was exit to Eden. <laughs> Give me DC. Ah. <laughs> Sit on the joystick in the cockpit. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Nut man. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> see, see, Imagine the uh, people on board and they get off the airplane and they must put a star. I know. Oh, I just can't even imagine. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, what do you do with the guy? Because you can't tie him up or lock him up You don't somewhere. even want to touch him after he's done what he's done. Yeah. I mean, like after he punches out a couple of stewardesses and pushes them in his feet, like what do you do? You're trapped on a plane with him. That's why it's such a serious crime. How do they tell the pilot? <laughs> Jesus Christ. So just imagine, you know, he's your seatmate. Yeah. And he's coming back to the seat after having... <laughs> Crapped on the cart. Imagine crapping on a cart, like in front of everyone. All over the seat belts. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I have to go. I peed in the overhead compartment. Take <laughs> 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 a shower. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, come on, it's fun. Guys, you get 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> Mental case. He must have off the smoke. <laughs> and, and his lawyer said, none of it happened. Yeah, he's denying it. None of it happened. Who did? Milk. Crate. Uh -huh. Rhinoceros. All right, Robin, anything else in the news? Yeah, a couple of things. If you're uh, marrying Don Henley, you got to feel pretty good about it. He married uh, Sharon Summerall. I would love to marry On her. the weekend at his Malibu home. And uh, his new bride was serenaded by the likes of... Um, Sting. Sting, yes, that's right. Who else? Billy Joel. Not Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> no, Jimmy, Jimmy didn't uh, contribute anything to the ceremony. All of the other eagles were there. Even Joe? Yes. They believe. said all the other eagles who just got off tour attended the wedding. I think Barbara Streisand was there, too. Wow. So you've got to feel pretty good about your man when he commands that kind of a guest list, don't you? Sure do. I'd, feel, I'd marry him. <laughs> it's worth putting up with anything, I suppose. I would love to marry him. <laughs> I would love to marry him. It's like having a concert in your own home just for you. Tony Bennett serenaded the audience. Wouldn't it be funny if, like, at the wedding, Joe Walsh threw up on Barbara Streisand? Oh, <laughs> that be good. God. How are you doing, hey, uh, I thought it was Jim Bailey. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? Hey, Joe, good to see you. Hey, this is a load of the cases of bad The old Joe is more fun. The Eagles made Joe get sober. They cleaned him up. Yeah. Now you won't even call in the show. I think he's afraid he'll start drinking again. <laughs> hey, Joe, why won't you call in anymore? Yeah, I'm not going to get in trouble with you. Hey, how was the uh, Don Henley wedding? Were you surprised they let you there? Because a couple of years ago, you guys were feuding. He wouldn't even let you play Desperado. As long as I got Perrier, I'm okay. I'm okay. And you didn't drink at the wedding? I didn't drink. All right. Yeah, you know, uh, Scott Einziger thought he was having, you know, the royal wedding. But this was the royal wedding. The L.A. Chamber Orchestra played Bach and Mozart during the ceremony. Was that good, Joe? I want to kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you must be unhappy. Aren't you tired of being unhappy I like this? <laughs> yeah. The Chieftains played for the reception. Tony Bennett sang at dinner. Right. And then Henley introduced Sting, who did someone to watch over me. Joe, you didn't throw up on uh, Tony Bennett, did you? One day, one day, everything was different. They tied me down and dyed my hair blonde. <laughs> Turned you into Robo Joe. <laughs> like Don Johnson. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? How you doing?
<laughs> How's Billy your penis? saying ebb tide. Ebb tide. <laughs> Was that good? <laughs> that good, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, sing it. <laughs> I, love, <laughs> I love your voice. How you doing? I love when you sing. But there's no tide inside. <laughs> Jackson Brown and J.D. Souther did the Everly Brothers Till I Kissed You. Joe, why didn't you sing something? I started drinking in 1968. <laughs> I sobered up and suddenly it's 1995. <laughs> How you doing? How <laughs> you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Don Henley even sang at his own wedding. Did Don sing? Joe, yeah. is that true? How's Joplin? <laughs> Why didn't you sing, Joe? I don't know. You sing so good. Why I'd didn't... rather play the guitar. Right. Where, where's Rick the bass player, that troublemaker? <laughs> Poor Rick. Yeah, Rick is out. Jilted. And you feel good playing with the Eagles? I mean, you can't drink anymore. You had to cut off all your hair. You have to behave yourself. I see even during your guitar solos, it's so measured and perfect. You can't make any mistakes. <laughs> you asking me why I didn't sing? Yeah. Listen to me. What are you, deaf? <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you sing. Braces are loaded and getting the back and getting the back and All right. I have a mansion in Hollywood. <laughs> I never been there. How you doing? <laughs> yeah. I My understand. audience needs a drink. <laughs> I understand that gays are upset with Mel Gibson. I thought the gays might be upset with Joe Walsh after what he just said. <laughs> They say they're going to be holding protests at Why? the opening of Braveheart, the new swashbuckling film. Why? Because he doesn't show his penis in the movie? No, there's some uh, English king or something oh. in the whole thing, and they, oh, oh. he has a male lover, and they don't like the depiction of their relationship. No. Oh. 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 Thank God Mel Gibson's saying he wasn't getting any hype on that movie anyway. <laughs> Is that the one where he's walking around in a kilt? I saw on Entertainment Tonight. I think you're thinking of Rob Roy. Oh. Well, I don't like that either, right, Joe? I'll take a rub, Roy. Right. How you <laughs> doing? Take a rub. How you doing? Henley still sucks. <laughs> so anyway, they'll be protesting Don the opening of sucks. Braveheart. <laughs> and a new study says that Jewish men show higher rates of depression than non-Jewish men. Told you. Baruch now, why are the Jews more depressed than all the other groups? You're going to be amazed at the answer. I think I know. What is it? I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> why are the Jews more depressed than, than any other ethnic group? That's the Morgan David. No, than non-Jewish men. You're saying the Jewish men are more depressed than non-Jewish men? Mm -hmm. I think because they're married to Jewish women. <laughs> no, no, no good reason. You can't go out. No, apparently it is depressing to men to be married, regardless of whether the wife is Jewish or not. I see. But why do the Jewish men have a higher rate of depression than non-Jewish men? Too much pressure counting all that money. <laughs> You're not getting even close. They're depressed because they're the same ethnic group as Ratso Sloma. <laughs> there, these are all reasons to be depressed, but, you know, other people have reasons to be depressed, too. They just don't get as depressed or as pr uh, depressed as often, and why is that? They're depressed because... See, Jackie knows the answer. Well, they're depressed because, I would say, because they feel, maybe they, they feel like they don't want to be Jewish or something, you know no. what I mean? No. They, they're depressed because <laughs> uh, the world hates them. No. Because they don't drink. There you go. Really? That's you what the, the scientists like are saying. They don't have fun. It's less likely that Jewish men drown their sorrows in alcohol. So they just feel their depression. Really? Yeah. The Jews don't drink. Other men drown their sorrow. So Jews should start drinking, Robert? <laughs> I think that's what they're saying. What is that, Jackie? Loosen up, you heaps. There you go. Here's Jackie for some advice for the Jews. Go, go, your time. Go, go, make your own. Slip back to your pride. Now, whiskey is to celebrate. Beer just gives you body weight and comes out of your ears before you're drunk. And your Jews won't be depressed when you're drunk. <laughs> Jewish men had a 2.8% rate of alcoholism as compared to 14% for non-Jewish men. 
Jackie Puppet, do you want to sing a song to the Jewish man? <laughs> Damn. Sherry Herring makes you old, old for your job. <laughs> <laughs> So drink, you Jews, is what they're saying. It's not that they don't want to drink. They don't want to put with a buck to drink. <laughs> You're saying the Jews are too cheap to drink. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh, I see. Uh, well, that's an interesting observation, though, that if you drink less, you're more depressed. Who is this? Rhinoceros. Ready to talk to Johnny Carson? Well, yes, I, I'm a little nervous because, of course, he is a big star. Hello, Johnny. Johnny? Get me another cup of coffee. Must I remind you of my explosive temper? Hello? Hi, Johnny. Howard? Now, I understand you called me a load on the air. Well, the reason you're calling in is because I called you a load on... You heard me calling you a load. I did not like that. Well, I'll tell you something. <laughs> I called you a load because I thought the way you handled the Joan Rivers stuff... Uh, you know, kind of just let me tell you something. How you sort of like the king of show business... Well, that's because I insist on control. Yeah, but I what I am saying is that uh, you can't control everything. You can't control everyone's career. If somebody wants to do another talk show or wants to have a career, it, th why should they have to come to you first? What John di uh, Rivers did was wrong. I did not like that. And I was driving in my car, and I heard you say that I was a lord. I nearly drove off the same spot where Richard Dreyfus drove off. <laughs> Alexis, did what you laugh mean? when Howard called me a load? Oh, Alexis, his wife. Is Alexis... Did you laugh? I don't... Were you listening to him? No. I don't like that. Just remember, mister, <laughs> you yeah. are a newcomer. Right. And I'll squash you like a bug. Oh, you're called to give Howard a warning. I'm Johnny. Yeah. Yaha. I <laughs> sing you. <laughs> you did sing me. Yaha. But... I may be in Malibu, but I have a long showbiz reach, if you know what I mean. All right, but what I'm saying is that, uh, you know... It... I didn't mean any disrespect by it. Oh, are you backpedaling now? Well, I'm a little embarrassed. <laughs> now that we can hear you, right? everyone's talking. Now, you say I look like Ray Walston from My Favorite Martian? <laughs> well, I said that once, yes. I said you look like Ray Walston from My Favorite Martian. Well, that's not funny. That's never funny. <laughs> well, who would know better than you? But, hey, the point is, is that when Joan Rivers wants to get a job, I'm not really backing down, Robert. I'm just Wait, saying... Ray Walston looks like some kind of monkey. <laughs> and you don't? Excuse me. Alexis, I just came in from jogging, and I don't want you listening to this. Sweetheart, brace your face. My lovely young fawn, mm, don't you ever fill up. Art Fern's mystery movie. <laughs> My lord, these are tight slacks. I need to go jog. <laughs> okay. Listen, my yeah. famous neighbors don't talk to me because they listen to you. And they're laughing at me. Oh. I haven't spoken with Toadie Fields in weeks. Toadie's dead. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. Yaha. Funny stuff. Weird, funny, good stuff. You know, my teeth are too big for my head this morning. Johnny. You sound like castanets. <laughs> I've, I've developed that denture S like George Burns. All right, Johnny. Now, what are you doing right now? Well... All this stress makes me want to play drums. All this stress? Well, yes, Michael Landon. Dying was intense. Yes. And I locked myself in my drum center in my media room so I could unwind. And I unwind by playing drums when I need fresh air. I lock myself in the refrigerator. <laughs> All right, let me... You now, know, I read... I'll I read it for you I if you stop saying I'm a lord. All right, listen. I have read... I read in People Magazine or one of them that you have a special Johnny Carson drum room. Yes. So, I, I mean, you were sitting there in your drum room? We would be honored. I'm in my drum room now, and I will reduce the stress with my drum therapy. All right, I won't call you a load anymore if Don't, you play the drums. All right, a deal. You have a deal. All right. Hold on. I don't think anybody's... <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> wow. I don't know why you won't play in public. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let what, me do this for you. Now, what did you beat more often, your drums or your first wife? I don't like that. <laughs> did you actually hit her? You know, in that book they say. Jody? Yeah. Jody. <laughs> did <laughs> I beat Jody? <laughs> Maybe you need to play this your... Is, this is what Jody sounded like sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> 
Then she'd look a lot better. Right. <laughs> hey, Gary, can you bring in a copy of my script? <laughs> Please. I mean, you know, <laughs> you'll leave me laying here like a dog. We don't know where to go from here. Raul of Bayonne. <laughs> Bring in Raul of Bayonne. Yeah, you like those like little uh, non sequiturs, don't you? Like Raul of Bayonne. Because it's funny stuff. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Aunt Blabby. Let me hear you play some more drums. It's like uh, John Could Bonham. Have done a professional job like John Bonham. Yes, John Bonham. I was going to say that. I was going to say, why don't you use your other hand? Right. <laughs> <laughs> How can you only use one hand <laughs> when Is you play the drum? <laughs> Gary, can you bring me in all three pages of the script? Oh, no. Would you mind doing that? Bring in that funny stuff. Oh, no, I got it. No, I don't. Hey, Gary, wait, I'm going to kill him. I swear to God, one day I'm just going to strangle him. He Who is, is Gary? No, Gary is the guy. Right there, two pages. That's all I had. You only had Probably. two pages? That's all you gave me. That's what I gave to Billy. All right, thank you. It sounds like you and he go together like noise and hangover. Right, exactly. Now, tell me about Ed. I told Ed, when I go, you go. He's gone when I'm gone. That Jay Leno... Jay Leno. Now, what about <laughs> what about Jay Leno? He is a lantern-jawed, banana-faced comic and will never get high ratings like I did. Mm -hmm. He'll have to bring back Michael Landon from the dead. All right, but what about, what about the controversy about this curtain of yours? You won't let Jay Leno stand in front of a curtain? My rainbow-colored curtain will be buried with me. <laughs> it's going to retire with me. I'm taking it with me. Mm -hmm. My pencil and coffee cup will be buried with me, too. I yeah. See. Yeah. Hmm. No comedian will ever step in front of my colored curtain except for Hiram Caston. Funny young stuff. <laughs> okay. Funny stuff. So uh, the, you're taking the whole set or are you leaving something for Jay? S something to sit on? Pussy. What? What? Pussy. <laughs> I just wanted to try that out. <laughs> oh, boy. Did you, you know, know Ed's a mess? I did know Ed's a mess. I oh, did I know did. that. <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll be right back with weird, funny stuff. And what about your wife? I want to speak Alexis. to her. Alexis. Alexis, your new wife. Your My beautiful new wife. You met her on the beach in Malibu, right? Met her on the beach. Was she parading in front of your home? With an empty glass. Mm-hmm. And I filled it up, and it was rather romantic. Mm-hmm. And uh, would you like to speak to her? Sure. Hold on. She got her breast caught in the tennis racket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Hello? What is it? Hi, is this Alexis? Yes, this is. Is this Mr. Stern? Yes, hi. Hi. Listen, uh, congratulations on your marriage to Johnny. Thank you. What's it like to be married to Johnny? Well, what can I say? He's a wonderful, handsome man. Mm -hmm. We live a very uncomplicated, comfortable life here in Malibu. Mm -hmm. We travel twice a year. We go to England for Wimbledon mm -hmm. and New York for the U.S. Open because Johnny loves his tennis. Right. Tennis and drumming are his main hobbies. We enjoy... Oh, there, there, he goes. there he goes. Oh, we enjoy each other's company. We don't go out and party. We stay home. And he treats me differently than his other wives. Mm -hmm. How does he treat you? Like, how does he treat... What's the difference between you and his first wife? Well, he doesn't beat me like he beat his first wife. I see. He doesn't beat... <laughs> Never mind that. Don't forget my explosive temper. Now... Never mind her. Put <laughs> <laughs> a muzzle on you. Johnny, do you read the script before <laughs> oh, I give it to you? May the blue bird of happiness get infected with AIDS and become Joan Rivers' dentist. Yeah. Mm. That's one. You gotta stay current. <laughs> I gotta go because Tom Smothers is coming over to spend a couple of hours telling each other how funny we are. All right, very good. Goodbye, John. Would you like, would wait, you like, no, 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 no. A what? <laughs> what? Would you like to speak to someone else? <laughs> <laughs> Who else is there with you? Paula Abdul. Oh, okay. Who is this? Milk crate. Uh huh. Joke, no, <laughs> <laughs> All right, go. Robin, Jackie wants to tell us a joke. All right, what's your joke, Jackie? <laughs> what do you call? What do you call? What do you call? A hooker locked in the refrigerator. A prostitute. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. Robin, do you get that? 
Do you get that? I don't even know what that means. If you could just oh, do come the... come on, you get it. It's funny. It's just locked in the fridge. It's just a prostitute. <laughs> yeah, I know that, but the, 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 the first part of it was funny enough. What did you have to give it a punchline for? Okay. You mean like a horse goes down the street, sticks a schlong in a guy's drink? Yeah, what do you need a punchline? I think that's hellaciously funny in itself. Oh, Okay. <laughs> He's laughing at his own jokes. Not only what I. What's your cup size? A. Dad, yeah, did you ever Sorry. do it with a black guy? <laughs> you wear underwear? <laughs> all right, well, let me get back to her. Where's the. Uh, where's That's the. Uh, all we got. Where's yeah. the commercial music? Fred. All right, what is this, Fred? Heineken. <laughs> ah, Heineken. <laughs> hey, Robin, I'm drinking a Heineken right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> hey, Robin, there we go. You want to try one, go. right? Fred, have a Heineken. Yeah, he loves it, see? He says, you ought to go out and get Heineken because it's real good and, and junk. All right, we'll be back after this. All right, then, then all of a sudden he comes back. And he goes, what is this, Fred? <laughs> Cedar sinai Outpatient Alcohol Clinic. Yeah, hey, you think you had enough of the stuff? Look in the mirror at yourself. Yeah, that's right, you're a mess. You got juice bags under your eyes, and, 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 and that forehead of yours is all puffy and hot. And, and, you know. I'd, I'd quit drinking if I were you, and the way to do it is go over to Cedar sinai uh, out, outpatient. All right, all right, we'll be back after this. All right, Fred, what is this? Uh. Dr. Randall Sword, hair transplants. <laughs> hey, you know, I'd normally look at you and say, hey, let it shine, brother. But look, look in the mirror. You know, no chick wants that. Every bald guy thinks he has a look now. He can be fat and have an earring and a goatee. But you know what? That stuff is nowhere, and you know it. So get over to Dr. Randall Sword today and get your hair back. We'll be back after this. Let me come back and he go. Look at you. You look like a big hairy ape. Who is this? Ranasaurus. Want to hear me and Billy do interpretive reading of uh, Pat and yeah, Howard Douglas? Yeah, I, I enjoyed it the first time you did right. it. <laughs> Let's start on page three. <laughs> Take a reading. See who can play Pat in the movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Billy, this is your audition to play Pat in my movie that I'm writing. Okay. All right. Let's see, maybe we should start on page two. Any page is a good page. Do the whole thing. It's only three minutes. Okay. <clears throat> All right, you got to come walking into the room yelling, okay, Billy? Yeah. And then you get on mic. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. <laughs> hey, Pat, you're not going to be... Hey, you start. Go ahead. Start yelling in the hall. No, I'm not going to go in there. This, uh, this Pat, you're not going to... Hey, Pat, no Pat, come on in here. Hey, Pat, you're not going to beat me up, are you? I'm on trial. I told him, forget me. Oh, listen, 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 listen to me. Because it's wrong. No, no, no. Pat, you Pat, You understand. Pat, I'm Pat. your friend, and I don't want to hear no, three no, no. idiots turn around and sit say down. that. Sit down. No, sit no, down. No, no, no. Come on. I don't want to sit down. Uh, sit down. I don't care. I don't want to sit down. Come on. You're blocking my camera. I don't care about your camera. Come on. Come on, seriously, okay, sit down. Well, You're blocking. I'm not going to sit down. Don't, don't be a part-time friend. You're blocking my camera. Don't be a hundred percent friend to me because I had to put soul. Sit down. I had to throw. I had to throw out a bomb for you. Hold on a second. Now hold. Come on, hold on and sit down for a second. I mean, you're out of line. No, you're out of line. No, you're out of line. You're out of line. You're out of line. You're out of line. No. Boss, don't turn around and don't call me for three months. Then you got three idle voices that call up and say, "That's where you're wrong." Hey, that's where you're wrong. No, because you're wrong. No. That's where you're wrong. I didn't call you for three months because you're the only guy who has an open invitation on this show. You had a hook. You had a hook. Oh. You had a hook. Pat, Don't get on. Pat. Give me that. You're looking for a hook to get me riled up. You got me riled up, and I've been riled up. Listen, 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 listen. I want to ask you a question. Can I ask you a question? Why don't you just call me uh, as Pat Cooper's a guest? I give you something. I don't want to ask me nothing. What? <laughs> you, you know what, Billy? You really lost it there. <laughs> Pat makes more sense than Matt. I know. You're insulting Pat. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. That's <laughs> not <laughs> Billy. Pat. Right, no, no, no. Can, I ask you, can I ask you a question? I don't want you to this ask is me. interesting. I don't want you to ask me nothing. This is, come on, this is entertainment. <laughs> I am how I am the genius of myself. Right. Not of you. Right. Not of you. You are a not genius. You. I'm your I biggest fan. I will not allow you or anyone to take Pat, my dignity I am, or pride away. My mother I couldn't your, do it. My father couldn't do it. And why? You, and you, a stranger why? next to my mother and father, can't do it. And I'm sick of this crap because you know something? Why are you sick of this crap? You know crap? something? Pat. You gotta be in a company. Don't put me in B company. Don't tell me Sam Kemison, Kem Tennyson is your idol. Oh, come if on. Sam Kemison's brother tells around and says, I didn't pay much. Who I said he was my idol? Because you're Sam Kinnis' brother, a drug addict's brother. All right, now listen to me. 
I want you to listen to me. Now, wait a minute. No, come on. Wait a minute. Listen to me. I didn't finish. Oh. I didn't finish. Yeah. Am I, am I going to get a chance to respond to any of these Don't accusations? Don't idolize. Am I going to get a chance? Don't idolize the drug addict. Am I going to get a chance? How dare you do that to Thank me? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> That was great. Let's do it on Broadway. Do you think we get a theater for tonight? Oh, absolutely. For tonight? Just for yeah. a minute. We'll get the flying Karamazzo brothers off the stage and we'll go do it. What's the scenery? Basha. Basha. Jackie Mason. Okay. Yeah. Jackie Mason. Throw Basha. Out. I see Pat Cooper's story, NBC two hour TV movie. Easy. I bet you Warren Littlefield will go Who's for it. Who's going to play Pat? Billy? Yeah, for sure. Billy could play Pat. Oh. On stilt? <laughs> Don't find me. And Jackie Don't play Jackie find me. chasing uh, Pat into the elevator? Oh. <laughs> You know hey, what? Hey, ball! Hey, come back! Oh, come come back, back. Ball. No more! Back Mind off, your Jackie. Business. Mind your business, Jackie. Mind your business, Mind your business, business Jackie. Hey, Larry, I don't need your love. I don't need your love. Come on. I don't want to be loved no more. Come on, pizza face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to come on your show. No, just, just enjoy it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, just take a deep breath. Oh. Come back. Come on. Jackie's oh, money always comes into it. But wait a minute. Like, I was innocent. You, you didn't do anything. I was, I you you, you get paid to be with me. Jackie, where were you going with your argument? Did you hear what they did to... Hey, what, what, were you, what were you working I on I was there? just saying that, that, that I got attacked all morning. I was just trying to... I, oh, you were, did you hear what they did to me? Did you hear what they me? did to me? Yeah. Right, right, oh, right, right. I see. Because right. I didn't know where you were Because I thought maybe he had been on his way to the show. That would have really helped, Jackie. We love you. We love you. I don't run. We would have put out an album, The Negotiations of Jackie Martin, starting with the Patty Davis Reagan story. Take a deep breath I thought that he had been on his way to the show. You know what he would have thought? He was, oh, now Jackie thinks he's me. Yeah. On the same level. Oh. Jackie's commiserating. Mind your business, you. Jackie. Mind your business, Jackie. I don't need your love. And no more. No more. I don't need your love. You're making 90000 to put up with that. <laughs> Back into the beep. A little beep at the end. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no more, no more. I don't need you. I don't know. You make a ninety thousand dollars a year to put up with that. <laughs> oh man. No more. I'm not gonna be. I don't need you. I don't need you. Your love. I don't need you. <laughs> at the right at the end there, you could, he was really quivering. You know, you could. You could no more. Yeah. What's with this effing elevator? What an exit. A man knows how to play a scene. <laughs> I think his spaceship took that away. <laughs> Goodbye, planet Earth. Goodbye, planet Earth. No Goodbye, no people more. of Earth. No more Earth. <laughs> no no more, more Earth. Earth. Earth no more. Earth no more. Mind the business, Earth. I'm a bundle of nerves, Earth. <laughs> I'll go be funny up on Jupiter where I belong. <laughs> Goodbye, Earth. You're gonna miss me, Earth. Don't you put me aside, Earth. <laughs> Want to do some more reading? <laughs> you, are you enjoying that? Oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, boy. You think you can carry on, Billy? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't know. Billy has to work into it. He gets no, no, cracked up, though. 
Yeah, well, I mean, that's high high intensity. Yeah. Okay, let's do the Sam Kinison part, page three. He's like a dynamo. Take it from the uh, second paragraph. I'll start saying, come on, Pat, listen to me. you got to you got to keep reading. You know what I mean? i got to yeah, keep okay. okay. you got to know how to do this. All right, okay. Come on, listen now, to me, Pat. Pat, come on, listen to me for a second. Wait a no, come on, listen now, to me. wait a minute. Come on, I didn't no. Finish. No, come on. I am, I, finish. am I going to get a chance? I didn't finish. Don't Am I going to get a chance? Don't idolize a drug addict over me. come on. How dare you say that I can't? How dare you idolize a drug addict over Pat Cooper? What are you saying? that I? You. What do you tell your children? Oh, what do you on. tell your children? Back off! Oh, what do you tell your children? Come on. Do you, you feel, do you feel? No. Wait a second. Let me, let I want to finish it. my conversation. Are you going to want me to talk? My, do you tell your children that you turned around? What? You I, had a drug addict for what? your idol? That I should idol, idolize. What do you tell I, your I'll children? I'll tell them. I'll, what do you tell your children? That I idolize Pat Cooper. How's that? What the, I just said that. Why do wait a second? Oh, this is not the issue. Because he oh, was a great up. comedian when he was on dope. Now he when he like was drinking the dope. All right, good. No, you lost. <laughs> now you sound like Frank Sinatra. Yeah. It's hard to see. No, you need a pet to do that. I don't know that you can play Fat Cooper. There's really. only one pet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Al Pacino can play that. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the only guy. Let's get an Al Pacino and see yeah. if he can read this script. Yeah, let's give this script to Al Pacino. Pat would be outraged that he couldn't get the gig. Yeah. I don't think Pat's big enough to we, do himself. We need, Pat, we need a Pat Cooper type. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you can't be Pat oh, Cooper. Oh, do you want me to get? You know, it would just be, right. you wouldn't be able to direct him. He has to be really mad. I know. Mother dear. <laughs> mother dear. Don't call me mother dear. <laughs> you know what you do? You make a movie about him telling him that he didn't get the part. Oh, it'd be unbelievable. You're asking oh. me for the back rent that I didn't know. <laughs> All right. You know what I'll do? I will go to every insane asylum and find someone to play that. <laughs> He's terrific. The great Pat Cooper. I, I'll miss him. I'm sorry that he feels that way. <laughs> Mind your business, Jackie. <laughs> he, yells, what? he yells for ten minutes, and then you try and say something. And he says, "Shut up! I want to finish my conversation." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Conversation. People should study this transcript like a Bible. <laughs> Writers should look at this. This was a great piece of writing. That's right. Mother dear. Goodbye, mother dear. You never Don't turned me. over no saints. <laughs> I love you, Mike. I love you. I mean, you may never hear it again. <laughs> Can I read you the last couple of faxes about Pat? Yes, please. I'm fascinated by the reaction. Actually, this one says, um, let's get off Pat. Can we pick on Jackie now? No. Does that no. drug addict really make 90000 a year? No. If that beer so comic makes that much, then Billy should be getting $10 million for his on-air performances alone. <laughs> I bet Nancy uses most of the 90 grand on finger condoms for his little schween and uh, dildos for her great big... How did this get on me? Well, I don't know. I'm just reading. How did this get on me? What? For her great... I wish I could read this. No, no, I can't. It's too dirty. This is her great big... Oh, please. All right. Here's one for Bill. Come on, Billy is a genius. You don't know how it sounds over the air. Either you actually have Pat in the studio or you're goofing on us. <laughs> or Billy is an effing, intelligently, loosely vocal tape machine. Signed D. West. <laughs> I am the genius of me. He has Pat down Pat. Pardon the pun. Billy, Billy, Billy. Funny, funny, funny. Very good, Billy. There you go. Two dos. Howard, Pat will be back. This guy says. Ken says this. Pat will be back. Where else is he going to go? He's acting like the poster boy for Angry Hacks R Us. If you're right, but you're right when you say he's an endless source of comedy. Howard, of the 500 times that the king of the Catskills has been on your show, I think he was funny four times. And here's a guy who doesn't like Pat. He doesn't care if he leaves. Pat should be nuzzling your taint for what you did for his non-existent career. <laughs> Before you infused his career, his shtick for the previous 15 years was to resentfully do the talk show circuit to complain about the new breed of dirty comics. This is what this guy says. You don't push Cooper. Cooper knows because Cooper understands. I feel Pat, listen, has had a, for whatever reason, he does not see things the way other people see them. No. And um, so I don't hold him to fault. I really don't. He can't help it. I, I uh, you know. I don't hold myself at fault because I never know what his list of rules are. <laughs> As my father said, it's a one-way contract. 
he's negotiating with himself. Oh. And I think it's subject to change pretty often. So. Right. Well, it certainly changed on us. Yeah. We insulted him by not calling, by saying you're allowed on here at you any time. You don't call me for three months. We haven't called you in years. Yeah, we've never <laughs> called you. We don't call anyone. If you, we, we, we call certain people. We, actually, we don't. We wait till they call us. Yeah. And we said, you can be on every day if you want. How much nicer can you be? I don't know. Maybe there was abuse as a child or something. Maybe he was burnt with lit cigars. <laughs> I don't know. Well, may, we may never know what happened to people. I don't know. But like this. You can't tie up a three-year-old and burn him with lit cigars. <laughs> <laughs> mother dear. Mother dear. What are you telling the truth, mother dear? <laughs> well, you and Papa burnt me with lit cigars. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell the truth, mother dear? <laughs> There was abuse! There was abuse! There was abuse! <laughs> well, let's go on record as saying there was no abuse. I mean, no, Pat has never indicated that there was This abuse. is a play, a right. loose play. A loose play. Based on our supposition about <laughs> yeah. If he childhood. was abused. I was, oh. All right, I wasn't tree. I was an infant. I was a bambino. <laughs> all right, very good. Let's do some news. We'll get off Pat now. <laughs> You Look. can't give Pat Cooper a birthday cake made of duty. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> Never put no candles in a pile of duty for no, a birthday during, cake. During the no commercials. More. No more. No during, more. During the commercials, we were saying, well, maybe something happened in Pat's childhood to make him so angry. <laughs> That's what the guys were saying. But uh, I said, I don't know. Happy birthday. It's simply speculation. Right. It's not based in fact. We know nothing. Right. Well, but despite what anyone says, I would take Pat back. Anytime. No more. No more. No more. You're no going to live no with this more. unrequited love, are you? No more. No more. Who did? Venmo at Milk Crate Marauder. Uh -huh. Cash app, dollar sign, Milk Crate Marauder. <laughs> you stupid bastard. Andy Bloom. This is the program director? Yes, it is. I've been trying to reach you. I am with a group called Radical and Mad. Mm -hmm. And I heard the most appalling program this morning. We do all did. It was about the Father Ritter bit on your morning show. Mm -hmm. We are with a 10% organization. I don't understand what that is. Well, you know that 10% of the world's population is gay. I didn't know that. Homosexual. Okay. We believe Howard Stern is wrong for Los Angeles. And I know you've probably heard this from others, but what do you plan to do about this? What do you mean? about this type of programming it's it's so terribly offensive and i don't mean just to gays but I, we're, we're seething I, what can i tell you I, <laughs> there we are many people that like this type of program but we are planning a boycott of all your sponsors i just thought that you might like to know that mm, certainly you're right it is and, and we're re representing a lot more people than than you know maybe you're laughing at all this but I'm not laughing at any of this I thought I heard someone laughing, but it is common knowledge that the world's greatest people were gay. I don't know that that's common knowledge or not. That common is knowledge. common it knowledge. It, 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 to, it is topic. not irrelevant. It is common knowledge. Michelangelo was gay. Socrates, Babe Ruth, Abe Lincoln. <laughs> Howard Stern is not nice. He paints negative social stereotypes of all people. And Howard Stern. What I want to do with my butt is my business and that's hold, hold on now calm down if you would listen to howard on the air and listen to him in his entirety and understand him you would hear him say exactly those words that what you choose to do is your business yes but why doesn't it come off like that it does yeah, it's certainly you're not listening you're only hearing we, parts of it we are hearing, listening uh, and it, it doesn't uh, appear like that. It is so offensive and so insulting, and it seems to be very cruelly directed. I've seen you on TV mm -hmm. on some of the clips, mm -hmm. Mr. Bloom. Yeah. And you seem to be effeminate. <laughs> now, aren't you sympathetic to gay causes? I'm sympathetic towards everyone. I have no complaint or no problem with your leading your lifestyle the way you would choose but to But there are so few people that are that are here to protect us or represent us and that's maybe maybe I seem a little bit terse at this point but and I appreciate your time but you know I mean I have seen you on TV and you're not going to tell me that you know that you you don't know many gay people can I, I do know that? many gay people and I know many gay people who like Howard Stern too Could you say the word exactly again 
I do know many gay people, and I know many gay people who like Howard Stern. When you say the word Stern, it sounds gay because you almost have that that lateral lisp, which is. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I am you not mean thoroughly that as convinced. Or as a compliment? No, well, I'm I'm not thoroughly convinced about you. It's, well, personally, it's none of your business. Well, I'm just you. Your voice has, has such a, a wonderfully gentle feel to it. And, and I'm a very gentle man, but Howard Stern is not offensive. He is a comedian. He uses. Satire. I don't think he he is not a comedian. No, no, no. There Maybe are, in your opinion, he's not a comedian. But Howard I think Stern, you think there are a lot more people laughing at him and, and entertained by his antics. I know that for a fact. Just like what you fact? Know that produce just like, produce on, your sources. Like, I would be very interested to know who is raving about how wonderful this Howard Stern is. Well, would you let me speak? Howard Stern is currently on the air in New York, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, and Washington. Is Howard and gay? Is Howard gay? No, he's not gay. How, how come a person that rants so much about that, it's almost like um, in Shakespeare when they said, methinks thou dost protest too much, the person who makes the, the most noise about it is generally a signal as to their sexual proclivity. Is Howard a rod bandit? <sighs> I can't answer for Answer Howard. directly. I have mean, a wife and two kids. But you know him. Yeah. I'm not sure what you're trying to get at, David. I'm not sure either. I'm, I'm, your <laughs> voice relaxes my colon. Oh. Are you Howard setting me up? Oh, there he goes. Right. Uh, no, this is not. Does you think this is some sort of... for real? Oh, but we bring him right back. He'll oh, see. dear. Oh, yeah. I told you I, who I was. Um, look, Howard is not in. I would like today. to see you. I'm Do you, sorry? I would like to see you. I would like to bring some members of our group in. And I would like to sit down and talk because this is not doing it. So he's back. He's here. Yeah. He, we, we recovered. Oh I couldn't believe it. God. Me. What would you like to talk about? You haven't satisfied me. Well, I doubt that I can satisfy you. <laughs> I have to go. I must go. Okay. I have to leave. I'm being fit today for a dental dam. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm moody. I've got a yeast infection in my butt. Oh, I really got to go. School's letting out. No. <laughs> okay. Are you having Are you having a beer and brat party or something? <laughs> Who is this really? <laughs> this is David Sean Ross. David Sean Ross. David, where do I know you from? Well, let me see. Does this sound familiar? If gays are outlawed, only outlaws will bleed from their buttocks. What's in your seat, a small boy? <laughs> are you there? Yes, I'm here. There's a buzzing noise on the phone. I'm so upset. All my jewelry is stained and my shorts are too loose. <laughs> Okay, Whitey's man. on the moon, huh? That huh? was anti-gay. What? That I was anti-gay. Whitey's on the moon? That was anti-gay? That was anti-gay. <laughs> okay. You think this is funny? Well, I'm starting to think it's a little more funny than initially. Initially, I thought you were someone upset, but now I don't think you are. You don't think I'm upset? You don't sound too upset. She doesn't think I'm upset. <laughs> Have you ever played face? Who this? Uh-huh. Rana Sorceress. Hey, Rock. Hi, Gary Delabate, please. Stern Show, can I help you? Yes, Bob there? Who? Bob? There is no Bob at this extension. Yeah, they just uh, sent me through. I need Bob. There is no Bob at this, at this extension. Yeah, there's a Bob there. Uh, Bob, uh, a buoy. Ah, hey, you know what? It's really funny. Uh, thanks, man. All right. Okay, hey, Bob Abui? Yeah? Uh, is this Bob Abui? Yes, it is. It's Bob Abui. Bob Abui? Bob A period Bui. Is, am I the first one to call with that? Yeah, yeah. Really? You the guys, guy. Can you use it? Take you guys, guys going to use it? Yeah. Bob Abui. He goes, no. Hey, that's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Rock. Gary Delvasse, please. Hey, young man. Star Show, can I help you? Yeah, Bob. Gotta go. Bob on this. Hey, Rock, can I help you? Gary, Gary Delvasse, please. 
Hello. Is it for a show? Who's calling? Yo, listen, uh, how do I go about getting an internship? Uh, send us a letter. Uh-huh. Well, how old are you? I'm uh, 18. I'll be 19 real soon. Okay. Where do you go to school? Um, well, I came out of Emerson in uh, New England. You went to college already? Well, no. I've got I've got a summer thing going, and I'm looking for work, you okay. know, like an internship. Okay. I, I am looking for somebody. Uh, where do you live? Um, I'm living in Manhattan, Lower East Side now. You're kidding me. No, I'm not. You know what? Um, tell you what, my, I'm Gary. Okay, um, I was referred by a guy that you know. Who? Uh, this guy, Bob. Bob Avoy. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Avoy. <laughs> He, 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 he wouldn't go. He wouldn't go. Bob Ho. Who did? Uh, I want to just say one thing. Uh, All right. yeah. I like me a lot. I do. But I'm going to tell you something. I was talking about and Billy. I'm going to do this for you because you're too much of a pussy to say. Uh, oh, okay. All right, Billy. Don't don't uh, take this the wrong way. <laughs> I can't imagine what's coming now. Um. And V, by the way, could Billy write some stuff for Ronnie Blumer Driver? No. Okay. Listen. Wait. 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 Now he's going to get in. All right. No. No. Listen to me. When we go on road trips, which is not often, once in a while we do a trip to Cleveland, we've done a trip to um, Pennsylvania, uh, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, whatever it is, there's a rule on this show. It's not written down in stone anywhere. But I don't bring my wife. Jackie doesn't bring his wife. Fred doesn't bring his wife. Robin doesn't bring a date. Ralph doesn't bring a date. Gary doesn't bring his wife. It's pretty much a solo kind of thing. When we went up to Albany for, the, for me to accept the governor it's thing. A working tour. My parents wanted to come on the bus. I told them no. It caused a big rift. They were all upset. They felt they were entitled to come. My wife wanted to come. I said, no, I'm not interested in that. I, this is my work. I don't want to bring my mommy and daddy and my wife to work with me. I sit and work with the guys. I have to talk to Robin. It's, it's a working thing. I'm not looking to socialize. And quite frankly, I don't want my family on display open for ridicule from Fred Norris and the uh, Jackie Joke Man Marlowe, okay? I said, you know, I don't want it. And you brought your wife on one trip and it was yeah, a disaster. It was a disaster. And quite frankly, I'm not, you know what? I don't mind the break from my wife. I really don't mind it. And I don't mind it. And I know the rest of the guys don't. It's very difficult to be, you know, it's a constant working situation when you're on the road. Right. Now, ever since Billy started working for us, Billy just shows up with his wife. Because I know he's, I know he's too much of a pussy to say, hey, Howard has said, the guys have said, this is something that we do on the road. But V just shows up. And I don't mind V, I like V a lot. There's going to be appropriate times to socialize. Like in the year 2005, I have a party plan. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the list. Yeah, so Billy, what's your story? Can't you tell your wife to stay home? I like her around. Yeah, I know you like her around, but the, the problem is it ruins it sort of for the rest of yeah, us. Yeah, but if you came to me. Because my wife kind of says to me, hey, how come V goes? And then Jackie's wife says, how come right. V goes? You know, I mean, it's just kind of blowing our scene. And we dig in everything. And then we, you know, yeah. Billy, you're one of the guys. It's just that why do you have to have your wife come? No mas, no more. Okay. And I don't mean it as a negative. If any wife should come, it should be V. She's the most fun. She has a nose ring. She has a lot of different things. She's cute. There's no, you know. And I haven't noticed her get in the way, really. I, no, I she doesn't know. get in the way. It's just, it's just, you know, and quite frankly, Billy's not into it. I and mean, he has to say that he is, but it would be fine just that bond. Well, you a know, bit. it is a burden when you have to, you know, what do you do? It's bad precedent. V, when yeah. he's in a writing session. Well, it's a whole thing. Yeah. And then Billy's looking for Bill, Billy couldn't even be on the bus with us because he had to ride with V. That yeah. is such a lie. <laughs> wow. That is such a lie. I have that, you know. No, you like, know, he feels guilty. Can I tell you, that's what I really resented. He feels guilty. That I, called, that I called in. Yeah. I really, I'm very cool about stuff like that. Yeah, but, but I don't understand. I have understand. no problem with Jessica Hahn in the bathtub. I don't have a problem. Yeah, I know with that. Court. You're one of the guys, V. I don't have a problem with Billy, you know, yeah. riding the bus back from Albany. Yeah, but why do you have to be there? On his lap. I don't care. I wasn't there. I was in the car with Ronnie and No, 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 no. Why do you have to go? Dancing. Why do you have to go, period? Because I just become such a fan of the show. No, I know you're a fan of the show, but you have to listen on the air. As a whack packer. No, 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 as a whack packer. I'm not putting you down. I'm just saying it's. You I don't view that as a put down. Huh. Well, <laughs> what I'm saying is that we don't want you as a whack packer. You're a whack packer with special credentials. That's not fair. Yeah, you're not a whack packer to us. You're, you're yeah, Billy's wife, and Billy's very dear to us and very important. But Billy has a hard time standing up to you. 
<laughs> he really does. He, really he does. He doesn't want to stop standing up to me at Look, all. he doesn't want to lose you. It took him a long time to get you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. And I know, Billy, I know you're real nervous about this conversation. Everything. I like your wife. It's not a negative thing. It's just, look, it's bad precedent. All the other guys don't bring their wives. You know this. Get laid twice before you leave, pal. I mean, you know. I mean, it's we've like, never gone that long. We go? Well, I know that his wife really wants to go. I mean, and, she and, really and can't. She's, and she's fun, but then your oh, wife and everybody else is like. Yeah, then they're like, well, wait a second. Why is Billy's go. wife going? And I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> I really don't. I'm a quick talker. But I do, you know, Billy's well, we personal know management. Yeah, you're Billy's personal management, but none of us bring our personal management yeah. to us. Come on. Oh, Don's not with you? Don is with me sometimes because he's running the group. But he's never on the bus. He's never on the bus or anything like I'm that. I'm never on the bus with you either. I don't want to be on the bus. Well, the, I'm, we don't you know have what? to take care of Don. Yeah, it's different. It's just different. You're a wife. It's different. Oh. We don't need, I don't need everyone bringing personal management. All right? Uh, yeah, Billy can talk to us directly. <laughs> Don's out there actually straightening things out for me, and stri not necessarily for me, but for the yeah, show. You told me. Okay. Yeah, but I, I mean, don't yeah, take it the wrong way. He has a legitimate function. He's in, involved with the affiliates and the whole thing. Yeah, it's a whole thing. When we go up to Albany, he's the guy who's the liaison between the Albany station and us. See, he's arranged the whole thing. Right. You're there hanging out and having a party. That's true. I mean, let's face it, you're not really managing Billy at that point. Well, not necessarily, you know, at your function, but I do right. that. No, you manage Billy separately, but you don't have to do that from the bus in I Cleveland. mean, you might as well come in here A negotiation might come up in Albany. Yeah. You'd be surprised. How'd I do, Billy? Did I say what you wanted me to? No! <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it, as far as that goes, she might as well come in here every day. I mean, we're doing yeah. a show at that time. Well, she would, though. <laughs> She's definitely into it. No, Gee, do you want to come in every day and sit next to Billy while he works? <laughs> no. does some voices and stuff. I've done that already. Management. That's okay. But you know, we just don't want all. You know, it's kind of like we had a good thing worked out where we can all go off and we don't have to bring our wives and we can work. And it's just I can't explain to my wife why V goes because she's asked me. She goes, "Hey, how come V went?" I go, uh, "V was there." Uh, v was there. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I don't know. And Billy's walking around with the wife, and it's a whole scene. I remember the time that it really was a little bit strange was when we stopped off in Cleveland at that house. Yeah. And, you know, you were supposed to get massages. Yeah. And v was standing there. Yeah, V's there. No way. Yeah, I so, did not sit and watch I was there. Yeah, and V's with a camera. So you can show pictures to my wife. Of Elaine Mark. So. Yeah, great. Yeah, do me a favor, V. I love you. I want to see you socially you when I see Billy. Love, I know you don't love No, I do. Aww. You're wrong. Okay. okay. I You're taking the wrong way. There's no rejection in my life. No. All right. All right. Thank you. Hey, B, go have a good day. Thank you. All right, thank you. That's Bye -bye. a lovely, beautiful girl. Blue hair. <laughs> Purple. How's that, Billy? Good. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. You guys can't talk to old women. He is so strange when you're talking to me. I know, he's like a, he's, he's a, he's a demon possessed. A so, different person. Now he's trying to smile and stuff. I, I know, it's a very uncomfortable then. thing. <gasps> I, <laughs> you know, I, I, I picture it like this. V is like way better than Billy. They, they, she's the best looking girl Billy ever got. And Billy just doesn't want to lose her. Will do anything she says. He's yeah. And he, so he's set up this whole relationship where she's really in control. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I also think maybe Billy needed somebody like that who he was a little out of control and he needs somebody who was more in control. I don't know. He's listen, like, listen, Freud. He's always analyzing yeah. why these guys are in the lazy. In control, out of control. What the hell is wrong There's got to be a reason. All right, get out of here. People don't like you. Get out. Get out. You bring the show to a halt. Get out. <laughs> Stupid. But, he, you know, like right now, Billy's not even working. He usually would goof on Ralph and do his voice, yeah. but he can't do it because no. it's about V. I know. It's weird. And he gets all weird when it's about V. Like, he can't say anything. <laughs> Very strange. No, she doesn't do an impression of her on the phone. No. Oh, oh. he can do everybody in your family, though. <laughs> <laughs> he told me. He, Ralph told me that. Uh, I'm telling you. Did you notice how he even said, it was a joke. <laughs> it was a joke. It wasn't true. I lied. <laughs> You're the most pussy whip guy I know, Billy. Thank you. More than um, Scott Einziger. Thank you. Nobody could. <laughs> what? You know, at Rob <laughs> Sorry, Billy. Uh, at Robin's book party, something ha what happened with the jacket? I was leaving the yeah. party, and Billy left B's jacket behind. Uh-oh. And... Uh-uh. You were supposed to watch! 
she was screaming at him. Really? And, and, and Billy, <laughs> Billy was like, had his head down. Billy's worse than Scott the engineer. He's like, yeah, oh. yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, she was losing. Did you get yelled at, man? What happened there? I was supposed to watch her jacket, and uh, oh. <laughs> I, I was holding on to a jacket, or I had it in my hand, and then one minute I didn't, and, and I, thought, I thought the janitor swept it away. <laughs> Welcome to hell, pal. Thank you. She must be good in the sack or something. Did she yell at you? Did she yell at you in front of everyone? I don't know. Not too bad? I think within earshot of Ralph. But yeah. I was in the other room, and I heard her. I came out to see what the commotion was. <laughs> Sorry, I missed it. <laughs> Even Jackie can yell at his wife in public, and she's not allowed to yell at him. Oh, he gets a few drinks at him. <laughs> Jackie takes a few belts, and he... he <laughs> What's the matter, Nancy? You got beer spilt on you? This is a beer fish. Get the hell out of here! Can't take it, Ben, do Come! Stupid! <laughs> and then he gave him called the C word. Get the hell out! Get the hell out, you C word! <laughs> I'm in control. Yeah. Billy, you need to drink. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Who <laughs> this? I really do want to ask Billy West if he wants to host an hour show as Jackie Puppet. Because Billy sent us this message that I never even got to play. At uh, so I can play it for you now. This is uh, Billy leaving us a message and listen to him do Jackie Puppet. And when he does the laughs, he nails it. All right. All right, here he is. He's just riffing. This is Billy. Imagine an hour of this where he has musical guests. This is my this is my thought. Like he'll interview people. And yeah. Oh, oh my. Be like, hey, this is Jackie Puppet. Uh, coming on now. Is Robert Plant you used to be in Led Zeppelin? <laughs> hey, you don't look so good. Oh, what happened to you? What happened to your face? Hey, drag it. Close your shirt. Oh. <laughs> but, but imagine Billy doing it. No, I was going to talk about um, some of some of the other staff, you know, that I had met along the way, and uh, you know, like the general manager and stuff. But I, I can't, I can't. <laughs> but I can. <laughs> don't you so? What's Tom doing? <laughs> Cheap, uh, cheap. Go, Tom. Go get your money, Tom. <laughs> what do you think you saved since since I left? Eighteen bucks. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know you can't fight on the air anymore. Oh, what got into me? <laughs> oh, Ralph, Ralph. Yeah, Ralph is a good guy. He's a real good guy for a crafty fag. <laughs> oh, liar. Oh, if it wasn't for you, the lie detector would have nothing to do all day. <laughs> oh, my puppet teeth look more real than yours. <laughs> and Bubba Blow Me. Where's Bubba Blow Me? You're a nice guy, too. And Fred, I got more smarts than to freak around with you. Hey, I know he carries a shovel in his trunk and some more clothes. <laughs> Serial killer. Hey, it's the real Jackie. Right in front of me. <laughs> I'm funnier than you are. I've always been funnier than you are. I'm venomous. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, I got one thing to say though. You, you always had that certain nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, How funny is that? Oh, it's great. When he does the laugh, it's right oh. down to it. I mean, that's the actual laugh, man. That Perfect. is Jackie's yeah. laugh. No. What are these other Billy West messages? Uh, he did one as Mort shot, but I, I have to tell you, I haven't listened to it in a while. I think it was pretty. Uh, I think it was pretty racist, but I yeah. Well, my shot was racist. You probably need to like that. That's uh, the joke. Billy West James Muckluck. That's a guy, uh, a black guy. Yeah. Who talks with... Uh, All right, look up, look out, look out. I didn't know that character had a name. Yeah, I think he named it. Uh -huh. I got a message for Robin, my beautiful Robin. <laughs> what is this? I haven't even heard it. Um, my name is Mr. James Muckluck. 
and I have the misfortune of being incarcerated in a lovely constabulary known as the Albion State Correctional Facility. <laughs> when I get out, mm, I'm going to be your voodoo man. <laughs> you ain't going to get rid of me, because I want you. I've been doing some fantasizing about you. Mm, I want to put my head right between that nutcracker and go... <laughs> now, Robin, I want you to understand that I ain't no wigger. You got all these phony-ass wiggers coming in there and, and and pulling all kinds of stuff and stuff. Well, I like the Jackie puppet. <laughs> yeah, this Where guy's we a little bit you, long. You know what? It's for Bosch. Yeah. I like the, um, I got it. maybe I should listen to it first, but uh, I always love Mark Schott. Yeah. Mark Schott, for those of you who don't know, I remember when Billy used to do this character. He had to set it up. You guys are right. Because Mark Schott was this horribly racist woman who would absolutely uh, just have the filthiest racist mouth about her baseball player. She owned a baseball team. Her husband died and she inherited the team. She was accused of making racist remarks about yeah. her player. She owned the Cincinnati Reds. That's right. Yeah. And her and her dog Shotzi. Yeah. But I know, I remember one time we called Billy to, we wanted to talk to Mark Shot. It was like the day after the L.A. riots and Billy was still in L.A. <laughs> And at first he refused to do it. I think he like went under his bed. You know what I mean? Like he, he, he was in a hotel room and he didn't want to do it. He was afraid someone would hear. Yeah, he thought they would hear through the walls of people and riot. Oh, he, he, dude, yeah. he, was, he said that there was like rioting in the street in front. We're asking him to yell out all that stuff. Hello, you. This is Mod Shot, ex-owner of the Cincinnati niggas. Oh, I meant Reds. Oh, God, I don't know how that stuff just comes shooting out of me. Oh, those were the days, though, when those proud, strong, honorable men were my niggas. Eighty percent of U.S. crime is committed by the colored. Oh, I'm sorry. That was <laughs> Isn't the kind of stuff she used to say, too. I mean, no kidding. It was like wild, right? Remember? And by Jews and blacks. And, uh, and yeah, they had her on yeah. tape, didn't they? Right. That was the big thing. Somehow there was a tape of her making racist and anti-Semitic remarks. I don't mind. I mean, I'm sorry. I can't control myself. Oh, God. Please, God Almighty, forgive me. I caused so much trouble. But I finally learned that you don't have to call them to know that it will hurt them. But you do have to call them to find out how much it will hurt them. Oh, it scared me. They're coming up the hall to get me. They're hiding now with the big eyes. <laughs> oh, oh, it's just my imagination there. I'm seeing black ghosts. Oh, God. Who is this? Cash app, dollar sign, milk, crate, marauder. Uh huh? Venmo, at, milk, crate, marauder. <laughs> you stupid bastard. Hey, Billy, did your wife yell at you last night, or you're not allowed to talk about no, it? No, no, we were cool. We, What'd uh, she say? She said, go to the Super Bowl party. No, I'm not talking no, about no, that. No, no. Oh, that stuff? Everything that happened on the air. Oh, no, no, everything was great. She went home, she came home last night? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she wasn't mad at you? No, we were cuddly. She was cool. She's real cool. <laughs> yeah, she's real cool. When you say something oh. twice or three yeah, times. Yeah, why do you repeat it? He's reading from a script. Right. Is he trying to convince himself or us? Yeah, I think he's Her. trying to convince us. She sounded really cool on the air yesterday. No, everything was great. Yeah, great. Because yeah. I heard that afterwards there were phone calls yeah. and Billy was still... Being yelled at. Himself out of things. I heard while we were on the air, you were on the phone to your wife getting yelled at. We got tape of it, Billy. Yeah, we smoothed it out. Yeah? Yeah, everything's cool. What was she mad about? I really don't know. He can't even bring it up anymore. Yeah, look at this. No, we... You know, why was your wife mad? You know why your wife was I, mad. I should have been a little more supportive because, you know, she does a lot for us and takes care of the business. And I should have, you know, come in a little more and... Said how great she was. Oh, boy, I mean, boy. What is she taking Nancy lessons? <laughs> right, now you see how dopey your wife sounds? No, I yeah, did. right. I told him he was in trouble because he didn't do a Jackie. Jackie right. gets in there and fights no matter what side Nancy's on. Right. Right. No matter how loony his wife is, he has to fight. I'm trying to figure out if Billy figured that out or if no, she, she told, told him to figure it out. No, right. told him. no, no, everything was cool. We, we what what didn't cool. you do? I mean, I, your wife went up to my wife and said something about her hair. That was kind of kooky. Right. And, and I, Billy should have said, but my wife is great. Yeah, but she takes care of the business. <laughs> no, no. What I, business does she take care of? We, we have Billy really business. Yeah, my, you know, bookings and my, you know, business stuff. Don't you have an agent? Yeah, I have an agent, but that's not like management. She manages him. She, yeah, she, wait, wait, excuse you me. Know what are you guys has... calling your wives managers now? Yeah. You, yeah. You're calling your wife manager? Yeah. She, in other words, my wife 
has a little calendar and writes down when I have to be somewhere. She's a manager. So she's a manager? Mm-hmm. I guess. But no, my wife does a lot of stuff. Like, like, like what? what? She's on the phone with people all day long about stuff I have to do. Like what? You know, um, career moves. Career moves? Do you want to tell you what she does? Or does she talk out? to your agents? Is that what you're Excuse saying? Excuse me. Billy, don't you go to auditions, yeah. and then if you get a job, your agent books you, and you go and do the funny little voices? Right, but there's some things that aren't great to do and other things that would be more... And you can't figure that out? Well, I, I'm busy doing it, and I can't be everywhere at once. Wait a second, wait a second. What, for example, what did your wife tell you not to do recently? Tell me not to do? Yeah, you said she decides things to do and things not to do. Some things are good and some things oh, not. Oh, certain offers that come in that, you know, that we should pass on that aren't that... that like what? Like what did you pass on? Like an, indus an industrial thing where you have to travel. So you couldn't figure that out? You have to go to her? No, we talk about it. I, oh, I see. It's a good thing to talk about it. So what, do you pay her a salary or something? Uh, yeah, she's salary. You're that busy that she has that much to do in your business or is it a part-time job? She's real busy with it. Really? Yeah. You're that happening? I don't want to say that because I sound like a dope. You already sound like a dope. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually fascinated that you, do you really cut her a check? Like we, a, we have a corporation. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, she gets paid. Right. Okay. Yeah. That makes more sense. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Robin, Robin, why don't you laugh out loud? Uh, don't laugh to yourself. Just laugh I'm out loud. Not laughing. It doesn't matter what I say. I guess. <laughs> so what does she do? She reminds you to come here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday? Yes. <laughs> So your managers just book you for everything. Is what your 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 agents just book you for everything, and V has to be the one who says, Change "This you. is a good thing. This is not a good thing." Yeah, a lot of times maybe somebody doesn't have your best interest at heart, and, and, oh, she, and she knows. Yeah. Oh, she she knows when someone has your best interest at heart. I think so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, right. I know so because we talk about everything. I see. So really, you're managing you, and she's taking notes. No. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a real manager because I know she already contacted me. She's like looking for, at some point, a publicist for Billy. And she asked me like who was good and who wasn't and stuff. Oh, I She's going to be interviewing. Oh, she sees career plans. No, she does looking ahead. Oh, so she interviews publicists. Well, she will at some point when, when Billy needs one. But she one. works it. She works hard at it. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> what do you think I should do? I think you ought to get a manager if that's what you need. I think you, ought, you guys ought to stop kidding yourselves. Yeah? Jackie and you. Nancy hasn't been my manager for it hasn't, seven uh, years. So it has hasn't, uh, who is your manager? With me. Who books your gigs? Me. So if somebody How much to... do you think I can work? People call me and I take it or I don't take it. But you negotiate. So even you admit so that your wife doesn't need to manage you. manager. I mean, your wife didn't have that much to do, right? What? He looks like he thinks he's on the witness stand. He's all confused now. He's like, oh, wait a minute, you're on a drive to answer that? Wait, Satan did. Oh, oh, Satan's not winning me. Oh, oh, oh. Because no. belittle, belittle, no matter no, what. No, I'm not belittling, belittling. You're saying... trying to find out what's going on at your house. You're saying that, like like your wife, there's really not that much to do. In Billy's case. No, I'm sure there's plenty for her to do. Oh. What is Nancy you're doing now that she doesn't manage Jackie? Well, she's concentrating on her acting full-time career. By the way, Billy's wife is following in, in Jackie's wife's footsteps. She went and got some headshots so she could be an actor. <laughs> I just saw them. They look great. There they are. How is she what going to be able like to Jackie? manage you if she's running off doing auditions herself? Well, then maybe I'll have to make some adjustments. But up until now, things have been... <laughs> yeah, so right now she's handling both duties. Hmm. Where has your wife been seen as an actress now? No, no, that hasn't happened. Really. Oh, it hasn't happened. Just, oh, we're preparing has for Has she been that. taking yes. classes? Uh, oh, she was in um, cinema studies at NYU for a few years. Like, oh. this was a few years ago. Okay, Aaron, good. good luck to you. Aaron, to last another two years. <laughs> what did you learn yesterday, Billy? That you were supposed to do what now, so we all get it straight? Yeah, what are you supposed to do? Whenever we talk about your wife, you have to stick up for her? And say that she does a lot? No, I should have I should have pointed out. In other words, we were asking her you know, why, why she made that comment to my wife about my, her hair. And you should have said, my wife does a lot of stuff as a manager. You should have stuck up for her, right? No. Well, what are you saying? Well, that's what your wife instructed you to do, right? No. Oh. No, I, did. I needed to point up other things that were going on in our life because it got to this thing about her um, giving me a hard time. Oh. And it's not... It's oh, it was unbalanced, your portrayal yeah. of her. I see. I see. Okay, oh. very good. All right. You have to give a more balanced portrayal of your wife. Yeah, we're tight. You guys are all doing... You know what I said to myself this in the bud, night? dude. I was thinking about this. I said, Jackie ought to just type out that apology for Billy. Yeah. Let Billy repeat it. I'd like to apologize. Here it is. Here, just repeat it. I apologize to my wife, Nancy, for uh, the Jessica Hahn death of it. It's stupid, and I'll never do anything like that again. And I love you, and I'm very sorry. And I'm very sincere. And don't, please don't make this. Come on.
not pay this. Serious. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I'm not trying to bring the show down. I just wanted to apologize. What is it? I'll say V was in something. V led. She, she, she did that little uh, thing that I did for my TV class in school. Oh, okay. Oh, so she was in Gorilla's acting credit. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't realize she was in your TV acting project. class. TV project. project. Right. Well, listen. All right, very good. All right, I didn't realize your wife was managing you. I didn't know. A lot of guys having very professional careers. Can, can I ask yes. Jackie a question? Yeah. I, because I, I, I'm not picking on you, but you actually negotiate now with people yourself instead of some instead of a middle person. I thought Nancy was a. You phony bastard. Yeah. Keep laughing, Jackie. As your wife yells at you every night. You phony bastard. Jackie, stop drinking. Jackie, she, she has to leave books for Jackie to stop drinking. I know. Jack, Jack, the one thing Jackie loves, he has to drink to drown the voice out in his head. <laughs> yeah, yours. Yeah. Keep dreaming. I've done more for you than your wife did. I'll tell you that. Bend over. Yeah. She was with you many years. I didn't see you getting anywhere. You were playing strip clubs in North Carolina. Managing him. Yeah, you guys ought to pay me a fee for managing you. You yeah, oh, bastards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ingrates. At least Billy's not an ingrate. You are. I'm not. Don't, uh, don't even open your mouth during this conversation. Lest okay. anyone forget. Lest anyone forget the Jackie attitude on this show. <laughs> ingrate. Because everyone who works on the show and then there's Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, all right. Now that I've straightened everyone out, <laughs> who's next? <laughs> Let's say straighten Billy's life out, Jackie's life out, Scott's life out. <laughs> Anybody left? You could have delved into Fred a little more. I don't know where Robin got that information. That was starting to sound juicy. <laughs> <laughs> so what did she do? She really, uh, so, so she critiqued Fred's Well, I, I must say that she waited to be asked. Yeah, but when she did, I'm involved in this. Well, no, wait a minute, you well, don't know what Let us build you up into a lather first. I, I know, I know what it is. What is it? Well, he already knows to put a, a balanced portrayal. What is it? Oh, I'm sorry, Robin. <laughs> Stick up let, for your wife. Let, go ahead. Let, let the truth be known. No, go ahead. What no, happened? She thought the sound was off, and it was. We didn't have a sound check. Did Robin? Oh, we just walked up on stage, and John walked over, and he goes, "Sounds pretty good, huh?" And it didn't sound good. Right. So in other words, she wasn't critiquing your music no. or your abilities. Oh, no, no, no. It was the oh, it was the pe the sound in the club. The sound on the PA, yeah. Oh. Well, you don't. She couldn't possibly critique Fred. Oh, I thought she'd give Robert credit for that. And you want to know something she has? No, Fred would hit the roof if his <laughs> no, Fred. You couldn't handle it if she. No, she has told me when it sucked, right. and I have hit the roof, but then I've taken. See, Billy's wife or Nancy would have gone over and actually fixed the sound system That's themselves. True. See, she hasn't gotten to the point of yeah. getting up yet nor and getting will, something nor, done. Nor will she. Did she go over and start yelling at any people at the club? No. No, that's not her problem. No, oh, no. no, well, Nancy, you got to hire V. West and uh, Nancy Sarah. Yeah, why don't you get uh, V to all. manage that's all. Somebody who has your best interest. Yeah, yeah right. Go. Someone who has your best interest. <laughs> See, now, v, v would be saying, Fred, do you have a regular sound man? That's what right. you need. Yeah, V would check into that. Right. So you need a manager. And wife. Laid out regularly. You need to pay your wife a salary. Do you pay her a salary? Uh, I figure she lives rent free, so that's, that's a salary yeah. as far as he's concerned. No, these girls get a little more than that. <laughs> Fred gives her a bill with no charge. So, yeah, right. That's pretty good. <laughs> very good. All right. All right, everyone's very lucky. And everyone's got a great relationship. <laughs> and everyone's very happy. <sighs> oh, I would love to see Allison come up and critique Fred's music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like that'll ever happen. Anyway, uh... Yes, so Jackie's show got an 8 with an 11 share. That was up oh, two oh. points from the last week, which was a 6-0 with a 9. Very nice. He placed third next to ABC and NBC for the State of the Union address. All right. Hmm. Well, there you go, Jack. I think you brought in some viewers. So kiss my ass! Why is that? So kiss my ass! Right. But now he's angry. Now he's mad. Yeah. Now you're mad, right? Uh, see? You want to hear a cool fact about Jack? Power things. He brought in the ratings. I almost told I know what he's thinking. Those are my rating. You know, it was because of me. People were still curious to see me. I almost toppled the president. It was my, maybe Howard hey. brought the people, but it was my acting that kept them. Right. Because they would have tuned out after the first five minutes. You want to hear a cool fact about Jackie that a listener just called in? Yeah. What? On Jackie's uh, Playboy special? Yeah. Like, does Nancy get a writing credit? <laughs> Oh. Yeah, well, she helped. <laughs> <laughs> Super. It's true. Unbelievable. What, she wrote the jokes? Okay. We redid the script. What script? The, the, the one that Playboy gave you? 
the, the Playboy, Playboy gave us a script that we pretty much had to follow, and we punched it up, and she helped. So I gave her a writing credit. That's she typed while Jackie told her yeah. to write. She's down on my lap. <laughs> Break her balls all day. She's talented. <laughs> there you go. I'm bigger than Brad Pitt. See, Billy, you're, while you're doing that impression, you should see what Jackie's doing. Yeah. This is what V right. wants you to do. Yeah. You can break your, you can break her balls all you want. <laughs> but she's talented. Do you think I just told them to give her a writing credit and they did it? Let me ask you something, Jackie. All right, I'm gonna lay it on the line to you. Go ahead. What other shows has she written for? None. What are you talking about? The talented writer that you worked with on the Playboy special. We sat there and punched up a script together, so she gets credit for that. Doesn't I matter. See, I see. I never acted before, and I got credit. That all right, there you go. <laughs> okay. Give somebody credit where credit's due, you schmucks. Listen to this guy. See, Billy, I just That's want how you got to stick know. up for your wife. I'm not interrupting because this yeah, is what you're to No, it's like she punched up the script. Definitely listening. You <laughs> should have dragged me into the ring of fire. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you schmucks. Give credit where credit is due. Right. You can break your balls all you want. She's got a nice cam. <laughs> Jackie, you know, you know, the woman's never had a writing credit I mean, anything that I know of. And now all of a sudden there's a big writing Who credit. was in the room with you and Nancy when uh, this writing was going on? Yeah. Uh, Paul Abeda and... Oh, what's your and Master Beta. <laughs> <laughs> the two producers. <laughs> right. And they decided to give Nancy a credit. Yeah, we all worked on it together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where's the foul? Yeah, Nancy wore a thong while the other guys were on. Well, I don't know, all of a sudden, yeah. She's a writer. Yeah. yeah. Why what doesn't she... she help you write? Does she get credit on your videos? What's the question? The, that, look, look at this. That was <laughs> a perfectly legitimate question. Right? Has she received writing credit on any of your other projects? No. This is the first one? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. How is that interesting? I'm <laughs> just interested me. Yeah. We'd just like to know the inner workings <laughs> of you guys with your wives and, and all these new actress slash wives that and don't appear to act, and managers who don't appear to act in anything that manage their husband's career How many books, right on their husband's special. How many books did you have your name on as author before um, your first book? I don't see Allison's name on the book. I must What's have, the point? How many names did I have on a book no, before no, my first never book? Mind, never mind, never mind. No, it just seems to me that other people would want to grab her up. News her as a writer. Yeah, haven't you gotten called? <laughs> you guys get hooked into this whole thing. You got to give your wife's credit. Did your wife? You don't have to do anything. Yeah, I know you don't. Sure. <laughs> Billy's like a church mouse. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Billy's wife just went and got headshots. Yeah. They all start to think they're in show business because their husbands are on the show. Yeah, My wife started that too. You know, she's for for a couple of days. She was into. Uh, she wants. I want to be in the movie. I want to be in the movie. I said, "You want to be in a movie? Well, marry somebody else. <laughs> I'll get you in a movie." You know, Billy and I were just. What was that? We were just discussing. Like we we're wondering what it's like when you go home. <laughs> you stupid bastard.